Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. We have so much to give God thanks for, amen? There is a wonderful song and the lyrics say, I've got so much to thank God for. So many wonderful blessings and so many open doors. A brand new mercy along with each new day. That's why I praise you and for this, I give you praise. I don't know what your this is, finances, relationships, traveling mercies, but he's a good God. And so today, God, we just want to say for this, for all these things, for these blessings, we give you praise. A brand new mercy along with each new day. That's why I praise you. And for this, I give you praise. I don't know what your this is. Close your eyes and bow your head for prayer. Thank you, God, for another amazing day. Thank you for letting us into your home to praise you. Help those who are around us who need help. Help those who don't need help. And please forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Lord. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, wow. One more time in the presence of the Lord. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? If you're happy and you know it, let me hear you say amen. Is there somebody here who knows that this is the day that the Lord hath made? Let us rejoice. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so happy to be in the presence of the Lord. I couldn't wait for this opportunity to gather with my brother and sisters in the presence of the Lord on holy ground to worship. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful experience this is when we gather from far and near to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I welcome everyone today to North Orlando worship. We welcome you to North Orlando Praise. Thank you for being here. We are cognizant of the fact that you could have chosen so many other places to worship. Amen. Every Sabbath, I have to foot stop this from the pulpit. We know you didn't have to be here. We know you have a choice, especially in this era of online worship. But praise the Lord, you decided to get dressed, take a shower. Amen. Brush your teeth. Praise the Lord. And come out. Praise the Lord. And now we are ready for worship. Will the church say amen? 
Praise the Lord. We greet you all in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. To those who are worshiping online, we welcome you to the sacred space. We thank you for connecting and we pray that when the, you feel the power of the Holy Spirit uh, moving in your space, we pray that you will like, you will subscribe and you will share this service. Every time you like our messages, our programs here. You, you let the, the YouTube algorithm know the that church was good. Will you say Jesus amen? Christ Praise the Lord. We're going to sing our greeting song at this time. We pray that you will sing with us as we just show God how appreciative we are for this privilege to worship on today. Amen. Please sing for our greeting song. Please stand, everybody, if you're happy. Say amen, say amen, if you're happy and you know where, say amen, when the spirit falls in you, and you shout hallelujah, if you're happy and you know where, of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much for singing that lovely song. We thank you for spreading the love of Jesus in this room. Amen and amen. We want to acknowledge a few of our guests who are in the house today, all our visiting friends. You are not a member of the North Orlando Seventh-day Adventist Church. Just wave your hand all over this room. Praise the Lord. North Orlando, look around you. Look around you. Put your hands together as we give God a hand clap in praise. Amen. I think, uh, I think we're experiencing a layover from last Sabbath, a uh, 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 homecoming uh, celebration. Will you say amen? Can we just talk about homecoming for a little while? Oh, my Lord, my Lord, what a Sabbath last, last week was. Will you say amen? Oh, man, I did not want last Sabbath to end. But I want to let you know that it doesn't have to end. All you need to do is show up every Sabbath. Will you say amen? Just show up every Sabbath. That's all you got to do. Show up and come out for Sabbath school. Come out for the divine hour. Come out and have worship. Let me tell you, there's something indescribable that takes place in the presence of the Lord when we experience corporate worship. Will you say amen? Ah, listen, let me tell you, family, I enjoyed in the height of COVID. I enjoyed worshiping at home. But after a while, I just couldn't take it anymore. There was something, Sister Denise, there was something that was missing, something that was lacking. Lacking. I don't know if it was just because I was uh, able to get away, uh, getting dressed at least from the waist up. I don't know. I don't know. Something just didn't feel right, family. Something didn't feel right. But when we were able to meet safely again, I just, I was just itching. I was like a racehorse getting ready to go through the gates because there's something about seeing your smiling faces. Come on and say amen. Even through the mask, I say it's something about seeing your smiling faces. There's something about sitting beside brother and sister. Even sometimes they're mad at you, but it's so good to still sit beside them. Will you say amen? 
Praise the Lord. So I want us to enter into a behavioral covenant yeah. moving forward. Is that all right, family? No matter how bad times may get, no matter how hard times may get, no matter the vicissitudes of life, let us pledge by the grace of God that we're going to come out in Jesus' name. Will you say amen? Are you going to join me today in saying that we will come out and we will worship? Even though the bills cannot be paid, we will come out and we will worship. Even though sometimes the pain may be racking my body, I'm going to come out and I'm going to worship. Will the church of the living God say amen? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise the Lord. We want to acknowledge you. We say thank you for being here. We have brother and sister Brave in the house. Praise the Lord. Wave, family, wave so they can see you. Praise the Lord. Uh, 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 Dr. Brave right there, she knew me before I knew Christ. Will you say amen? We, we had the privilege of going to the uh, University of the West Indies, Mona, together. And I was there that we met a good friend of the family even to this day and they are in the presence of the Lord today will the church say amen is there a motion that we entertain at this time a transfer of membership for all those who are visiting with it has been moved is there a second ah let the people of God say amen it is carried it is carried it is carried praise the Lord praise the Lord I'm gonna get in some trouble Oh, my Lord. But it's so glad to have you. So glad to see all our visiting friends coming out today. I had the privilege of meeting some in the foyer. We just want to say thank you for choosing North Orlando Worship today. Thank you for making this place your place of worship. And we promise you, let me tell you why, why I'm promising you, that today is going to be a day you will not be able to forget. We have a preacher in the house. Now, you all are mighty silent. Let me talk to the overflow because only the overflow is with me today. Uh, there is a preacher in the house. Amen. On my right, I said there is a preacher in the house. Uh, on the left, I said there is a preacher in the house. So you know what this pastor is going to do? This pastor is going to sit right over there in that corner. As a matter of fact, I'm going to sit beside my lovely wife. This pastor is going to put my feet, his feet up, and I'm going to enjoy a good word because Pastor Bins is in the house. Will you say amen? Uh, little did he know, little did he know that he was uh, not just coming here for a baby dedication today. He had no idea that God, God ordained it, that he was going to preach a word from this pulpit. Amen. Rescue story. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm excited for what God is about to do, and I pray that you will be excited too. Will the church say amen? Praise the Lord. More will be said uh, about him a little later on. We will go through his list of bona fides, and I know that you will be happy that this mighty man of God is in our midst today. But before I take my seat, I really want to say uh, thanks to every one of our leaders who last Sabbath showed up and did their part to make homecoming reconnect a success. Will you put your hands together as we thank God for all our leaders? You all did an amazing job. The hospitality last week was turned all the way up. We have people right now who are seriously contemplating giving up their long-standing memberships in other places of worship just to come and experience once again the North Orlando hospitality and the North Orlando worship. We say thanks to all of you. If I start calling names, I'll get in trouble. But I just want to say thanks to all of you. Let me tell you, when we went over to the fellowship hall, it was fit for a wedding reception. They went all out. Are you listening to me? When I saw the decor, Sister Susan, Sister Donnett, when I saw what took place over there, I, I just felt like eating wedding cake. Uh, well, it's, it's just me alone. I, I just feel like eating some wedding cake. And I believe that uh, something is going to happen very soon. Somebody say amen. I'm going to call out some names in the presence of the Lord and let you know that something is going to be taking place very soon in Jesus' name. But it was just such an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Praise the Lord. Uh, just a quick recognition here. On Zen, Sister Zenobia Davis, she turned 101 this month. Let us put our hands together at this time as we say thanks be to God. 
on Zen. Thank God for you. Will the church say amen? Praise the Lord. Family, let me tell you, I want to reach there too. There is nothing faithless in this pastor saying, I want to be translated. I don't want to be resurrected. Will you say amen? I want to live until God comes. And I pray that we will do our very best. Take care of our health. Love God. Love people. Until we see his face to face, him face to face one more time. Praise the Lord. Where is Brother Shaquille? Brother Shaquille, if he's on the outside, please, please. Shaquille, come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Will the church say amen? Come. Brother Shaquille will be leaving us next week. He'll be heading off to San Antonio, Texas. And Shaquille, man, I want to say, first and foremost, I'm going to miss you. You know, I just showed up and you're taking off. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm glad that we had a chance to talk and I understand what you're doing. And I say, thank God for you. Thank God for your commitment to family. God is going to bless you for what you're about to do in San Antonio for your brother. Will the church say amen? You have given excellent service in this branch of Zion. And this pastor wants to salute you at this time and say thank you for your commitment to God and to this church. May God bless you on your way. May he go before you like a consuming fire. May he establish your steps. I pray he will go before you and break protocols in your life. And I pray in the name of Jesus that he will dispatch your helpers speedily. In Jesus' name. Church, will you say amen? And amen. God bless you, brother. Go with Jesus. Take the name of Jesus with you. In Jesus' name. God bless you, Shaquille. Amen and amen. I'm excited about next Sabbath. Can anyone tell me why? Next Sabbath, the Chitons will be in the house. And if is there anything you know about me, I love some good music. Amen. Two things, the spoken word, good music. Oh, Lord, it's going to be awesome. In the afternoon as well, they'll be doing the entire AY program for us. You cannot afford to miss it. So please project that on your calendars so that you do not plan to be anywhere else. Don't go church hopping. Don't go anywhere. All roads lead to North Orlando next Sabbath. Will you say amen? Praise the Lord. Tomorrow, please remember the funeral service for a late brother, Reston Arnett. Uh, please uh, uh, plan to be here as we show our love to the family, uh, you know, tomorrow. Family, let me tell you, I told you this before, buried my mother in November, buried my father in January of 2018. If it were not for the love and support of church members like yourself, sh just showing up at the, at the funeral, showing up uh, at the wake, just, just showing your support. Sometimes even just sitting there in silence, it means a lot to the family. So if we can plan to be out here tomorrow at 10 a.m., that will be absolutely wonderful. Will the church say amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, there's a baptism. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a baptism. This is very special for me, my very first baptism here at North Orlando. Will the church say amen? You know, on the first Sabbath, Pastor Benz, the first Sabbath I came here, sir, a young lady met me in the foyer, and she said, Pastor Carol, I'm so glad you're here. Guess what? I will be the first person you baptize here at North Orlando. And praise the Lord, she's getting ready to go in the pool. I'm seeing a beautiful smile right there. She's excited about her new relationship with Jesus Christ. And I know she's going to do so well in this branch of Zion. Will the church say amen? Baptism right after the sermon. After the sermon preached, we have four candidates. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I believe after the preaching today, after Rescue Story, Sister Denise, I believe that it could be more. It could be more. So when the call is made, I pray that your hearts will respond with joy. Amen. Chaplain Henry is in the house. Will the church say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Elder. So good to see you, Elder D. Uh, Dr. Vernon, good to see you in the presence of the Lord. Welcome to North Orlando worship. Welcome to North Orlando praise. May God bless you, family. 
May God keep you all in the name of Jesus as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. One quick, quick announcement. We have also in the house Sister Bachelor. Where is Sister Bachelor? Amen. Where is Sister Bachelor? Uh, she is, dear, she is. Church, let's put your hands together as we magnify the name of Jesus. Sister Bachelor, right there, she is exhibit A of the grace and mercy of Almighty God. Will the church say amen? Wow, after suffering a stroke in 2019, I, I saw this wonderful child of God walk in here on her own, giving God praise. And I want to say on her behalf, family, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And if there's anyone here today facing any health emergency, we want to remind you here at North Orlando that God still answers prayers. If you believe he answers prayers, I dare you to put your hands together, open your mouth, lift up your voice, and just give God your highest praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord today in the beauty of holiness. Let us continue to pray for each other. Remember those who are fighting illnesses. Remember Brother Isaiah Thorpe as well, uh, who had a health scare last week, I believe. Let us continue to lift him up in our prayers. God is able in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand for the opening hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal, 619. church terrific thought uh, any of you guys ever been in a weird uh, uh, maybe a, a bad relationship so I was thinking about some of the bad relationships I've been in I've been in some bad relationships and that's why they're ex-relationships 
Um, in a relationship, have you ever experienced a person who maybe on a special occasion they smother you, like birthdays or Christmas or, you know, we have Valentine's Day coming up. They go over and uh, above the, the norm. They, they do gifts. They do all kinds of crazy stuff for you, and it's awesome. But then the rest of the time, they're kind of aloof. They, they're they not expressive. They don't show emotion. They're not helpful. They can be rude or mean. But then they have those good moments. Is that a healthy relationship? Um, another example. Anybody here ever try to get in shape? If you're like me, you've been on this roller coaster like your whole life of trying to be in shape. Um, I've gone through periods where I started P90X. I started Insanity. Um, I worked out with players I coach. I've done my own personal workout plans. But whether it's due to my schedule, whether it's due to lack of motivation, whatever the case may be, I haven't always been able to maintain that, that uh, desire and that, that push to work out. Uh, recently, to that point, Lincoln has started a group with the, the guys, some of the young adults, some the guys from the band, some members from Pathfinders. Uh, started with this push-up challenge, but now it's turned into like a regular thing. And they have a little group chat that's showing some consistency, holding each other accountable. And so as a result, you can see people being able to consistently get better. And so the point I'm trying to make is this. In a relationship, and I want you to repeat after me. Repeat after me. Consistency is greater than intensity. So now when it comes to giving, I am guilty of this. I am the person that will be like, all right, I think we need this, and so I'll put money towards that thing and then kind of forget for the next couple of weeks. But I want to encourage you today as we prepare to give and as the deacons prepare to come forward to collect today's offering to think about that as you go forward. Being consistent. The lifeblood of the finances of the church is consistent giving. So today, as the deacons come forward, um, I want to remind you of the different ways you have to give. Uh, obviously, as it's posted on our screen, you can give online through AdventistGiving.org. Also, I want to mention that you can go to our church website, NorthOrlandoSBAChurch.org, and access that through our giving tab there as well. Um, you can also uh, come to church in person, as we're encouraging, and we will collect offering from you in person regularly. Uh, you can also mail in your, your gifts to P.O. Box 680626. Uh, excuse me, 680625, Orlando, Florida, 32868. And if you need to, you can make a phone call to the church here at 299-1342. 407-299-1342. And arrangements will be made to help you out with picking up your offering. Um, just encouraging you, again, to give and give with a cheerful heart. The Bible tells us that um, each one should give as they have decided in their heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So at this time, uh, let's just say a word of prayer as we prepare for the deacons to come forward and collect our tithe and offering. Our Father God, we thank you so much for your love and your, your mercy. Uh, you have sacrificed so much for us, so now is our opportunity to sacrifice just a little bit for you. Uh, we pray that you would bless us as we return to you what is rightfully yours and what you have given us the ability to uh, be washed, keep over, and also the things that we have determined in our hearts to give you because we love you and because we respect and appreciate what you've done for us. Allow those things that are returned today to uh, be effectively used for your service and to quicken your coming. We thank you so much and again. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Good morning, church. Okay, children, this is your time. You know, it's funny. If they don't hear that music, they don't know it's their time to come up. four children. Good morning, boys and girls. I know there are a few of you, but I know if you're outside playing, you'd be a lot louder than that. Good morning, boys and girls. Okay, good morning, parents. I don't need to ask you to say that again, right? Okay. Well, the story I'm going to tell you today is about... And please let me put this disclaimer in there now. The story is called Jimmy and the Jam Jars. It is not me. Okay, my name is James. My mother called me Jimmy, but it's not me. Okay, now, you know what jam is? Or jelly? You like jam and jelly? Strawberry jelly? Wow, Jimmy loves strawberry jelly. Well, one day his mother was in the kitchen and she was making all this jam or jelly and the smell was just going through the house and her son, Jimmy, loved jam and she said, now I'm going, I'm finished in the kitchen, I'm going over to Sister Brown so I'll be there for a little while. You have something to do while I'm away? Yeah. What you gonna do? Well, I can play with my trains and, and my cars and my, and my Legos. I have stuff to do. Okay, be very good. I'm going to Mrs. Brown and what I want you to do is don't go into the kitchen. W why not? Well, um, just don't go in the kitchen. Okay. Well, he was playing with his trains. Everything was fine. He got bored with the train, started playing with his trucks. He got bored. He started playing with his Legos. He got bored. He's like, what else can I do? Um, you know what, let me, let me walk around and see. There must be something else I can do. Well, he walked by the kitchen, and the smell of the jam just hit him. And he was like, oh, man. And he said, Mommy won't mind if I just stick my head in the kitchen. So he stuck his head in the kitchen. I don't see why she said I shouldn't come in here. There's nothing in here. It's all clean. And then he went inside the kitchen, and he was looking. I still don't see why I shouldn't be in the kitchen. And then he looked up, and there on two top shelves was the jam. And he's like, oh. Uh. Now, back then, they had these cupboards that lightly sat on top of one another. And he said, I can't reach it. I need, you know, let me get this stool. 
So he got the stool and he brought it over to the cupboard and it had two glass doors on it. And he, um, mommy won't mind if, if I just open the cupboard. I mean, I'm just going to open the cupboard. Well, mommy wasn't there to say yes or no. Well, you know what? She wouldn't mind. So let me open the cupboard. So he stood on the chair and then he pulled, 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 pulled it. Ah, okay. Oh, man. All that jam. Oh, man. And he could taste it. You ever tasted something and you haven't really tasted it yet? Okay. So he looked at it and he was, oh, you know, I. Uh, um, she has so many jars up there. I wonder if she wouldn't mind if I just tasted one. I just open the jar and just taste, taste of it. She won't miss it. And he reached up and reached up and he put his hand on the top of the jar and he started to turn it. He started to turn it and just then the stool fell. And as the stool, stool fell, he grabbed onto the top shelf. And remember I told you the cabinet, it wasn't really secured. It was just sitting on top of the other one. Well, the cabinet ended up on top of him, on the floor with all the jam. Just then, his mother was coming from Sister Brown. And she heard the crash. And she ran inside. And when she looked in the kitchen, what do you think she saw? Man. Now, mothers, you know, if you just clean up the kitchen and your child messed it up, you know it's not a good thing. Well, she looked, and the first thing she said, Oh, my poor Jimmy, my poor Jimmy. Oh, he's dead. He has to be dead. And then she looked, and she saw a little movement under the cabinet. When she picked up the cabinet... He was covered in jam from his head to his foot. And she said, oh, my poor Jimmy. Oh. And she picked him up, and she took him over to the sink, and she washed him off. Jam was in his hair, in his eyes, in his shoes, all over. And then she realized, she said, with all the glass that broke, he's not cut. Well, remember now, she was saying, my poor Jimmy, my poor Jimmy. Now it was, Jimmy, you rude boy. I told you not to do that. And you see, you disobeyed me. And see what happened? Well, she grabbed Jimmy by the hand and she took him upstairs I will leave it to your imagination what happened upstairs. <laughs> but Jimmy said, after that, he never disobeyed his mother anymore. Amen. So, children, the moral of the story is be obedient. Okay? So, let's pray. Shh, we're going to pray now. We're going to pray. All right, close your eyes. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for being with us. Help us, Lord, to be obedient. Not just the children, but the grown-ups too. We thank you for your love and your mercy. Now be with us during the rest of this service. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Okay, go back to your seats now, quietly.
right, good morning, good morning. We have a baby to bless this morning, so that, that's the reason I'm here, Bishop. Um, th this other stuff is the, uh, it's the dessert, this is the meal. Let's have the family come on up as we dedicate this little one to his creator and his God. Let me invite Pastor Carol to come on up here and join us. L let me let North Orlando know that most of who you're seeing up here used to be here. So, Pastor, you need to um, get them back home. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen, amen. This is our little one today. And I'm privileged to uh, be the person designated to give him back to his God. Little... Sanai King. Did I get that right? All right. My my um yeah, he's 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 a little bored with what's going on. But we're privileged today to have this family stand before God and this company of witness to dedicate this little bundle of joy. He's a handsome fellow, and he will certainly grow in the nurture and admonition of our God. I'm so glad this morning that this pastor who has been given the opportunity to bless this baby is not the one that actually does the blessing. If, if I were the one to bestow the blessing, then we would have some issues, but... but but, but the one who actually does the blessing is his creator. It is God that has given him ten fingers and ten toes and put him all together. But not just put them all together, has ordered his steps and has directed his path. And the sum total of his being is already enclosed in all that he will become. But God decided to take a little bit of mom, a little bit of dad, a little bit of grandma, a little bit of grandfather, and put them all together in Sinai. Now, if mom and dad are happy with who they are, if they have achieved all that they need to achieve and done all that they wanted to do and uh, have uh, accomplished all that they want to, then there's not much work you need to do with Sinai. Just kind of let him grow because he's going to become like dad or like mom. But if you're not quite there yet, then there's a lot of work to be done. You've got to raise him in the nurture and the admonition of our God. When he rises in the morning, you've got to sing the songs of Zion. You've got to read the word to him. You've got to share God with him because he, don't, he, won't, he won't know it just by growing up. He will need to be taught of the Lord. And so this mom, this dad, this family, this community of supporters are responsible to make, to make certain that who he becomes is not only directed by God, but instructed by this family as well. And so all that he will be rests on 
our shoulders. From the providence of our great God who watches over him and orders his steps to the part that mom and dad and grandparents and aunts and uncles have to play, all of that combined, as well as our church, to make him all that God would have him to be. So now we will take him, we'll dedicate him, we'll present him to our God. I'm going to invite Pastor Carol to pray the prayer of dedication as we take little Sinai and offer him back to his God. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for this occasion. We thank you, Father, for you who, you, you are God, the one who said, suffer the little children to come unto me. We stand here today in solidarity with the family and handing baby Sinai back to you. Father, we pray that your divine blessing will be upon him. We pray, dear God, you will surround him, you will protect him, keep him safe from all childhood accidents, harm, and danger. I pray, dear God, that you will continue to dispatch his angels to protect him as he grows, as he goes out, and as he comes in. Keep him safe on the busy highways when he's trapped into his little car seat. I pray, dear God, you'll be the pilot with every trip he takes on our dangerous roads. Please, dear God, keep him safe for now and until you come. We pray, O King Eternal, that as he grows, he will early know God as Father, Jesus as Savior, and the Holy Spirit as Guide. I pray, Father, that he will be like Daniel in Babylon. He will stand for right, though the heavens fall. We thank you for his parents. May you continue to bless them, we pray. Keep them together in love. I pray, dear Father, that they will continue to set the right example for this very precious bundle of joy. And Father, we pray that when you come, this family unit will be among the number that will be standing on the sea of glass. That is why we're here today, Father. That is why we're giving our baby Sinai back to you. The ultimate reason for our faith and existence is that we be found faithful when you come. So we pray in the sweet, precious name of Jesus that you will save us, we pray. We pray that from this day forward, salvation will come to all our homes. As I close this prayer, Father, I rededicate all our little children back to you in this house today. I present them along with baby Sinai and collectively, Father, we are handing them back over to you. Thank you for making them. Thank you for taking our mothers through the third trimester of pregnancy. Thank you for keeping them safe through labor and delivery because we know, Father, that Satan is angry at every birth because of the power of every child to do damage to his agenda. So please surround him with your care. Envelop him. Cocoon him, Jesus. We pray. Lord, we know that one angel that excels in strength is more powerful than a thousand secret service agents. So dispatch his angels even now, we pray. In Jesus' name, let the church of the living God say amen and amen. Happy Sabbath, church.
on behalf of our church and our pastor, I'd like to present to you this little token. Inside, it's the dedication certificate and the book that read Child Guidance. I hope you read it to Baby Zania. And Baby Zania will be here at Sabbath School at 9.30. <laughs> Have a happy Sabbath. Good morning, church. Today's scripture reading we're taking from Zechariah 3, verses 3 to 5, 1 to 5. And he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee, is not a brand plucked out of fire. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and stood before the angel. And he, sh and he answered the sp and spoke unto those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Un and unto him he said, Behold, I have caused in iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mighty upon his head. So they set a fair mighty upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord said, stood by. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. about you this morning, but if you would rather have Jesus than silver or gold, if you would rather be his than have riches untold, if you would rather have Jesus than houses or land, if you would rather be led by his nail-pierced hand, if you'd rather have Jesus than worldly applause, if you'd rather be faithful to his dear cause, if you'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame, if you'd rather be true to his holy name, I invite you to join me in a posture of prayer at this time. Let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 
Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we declare this morning that there is none like you. We have searched high and we have searched low and have yet to find in anyone else what we can only find in you. You have been a good father to us this week and a good friend. You have been a good healer, deliverer, and forgiving redeemer to your children. You greeted us with grace and mercy, new grace and new mercy when we opened our eyes this morning and dared to take a breath. We thank you and we praise you. We gather now to worship you by taking just a few moments, O oh God, to sing your praises as we lay our burdens at your feet. Father, we have come for so many different reasons, but we came. We're here and we humbly approach you because we believe in your awesome power. If there is anyone who may not believe in your power this morning, Father, I encourage them to grab the hand of the person sitting or standing beside them now. Father, for some of us, we are hurting this morning and suffering from things that we have found ourselves in, from an illness that we've been battling for a long time or one that we've just recently found out about. Father, some of us are confused and stressed because we show up to work each and every day and we do our best, but yet our bills are more than our income. Some of us, Father, are tired and sad because we desired to raise our children to want for nothing and now they appear to not want a relationship with you. Help us to be who we want our children to be, as we were reminded by the reading this morning. Some of us, oh God, are on the sick and shut in list. Some of us are grieving and mourning the loss of a loved one whether just recently lost or some father even within our midst are remembering those they lost 10 years ago or more. We pray for them, O oh God, and we ask that you will draw close to us even now as we pour our heart out to you. Father, some of us came with a testimony on our tongue proclaiming the life-changing and miracle-working way that you blessed us this week. You're, you've allowed us, Father, to see another year of life, to walk with less pain today, and some even to simply just see another Sabbath day's blessing. Regardless of our reason, Father, we know that you have and you care for all of us just the same. We know that your power is not limited by a first come, first serve basis. The blood that Jesus shed on Calvary was enough to cover us all and to save us from our sins. And because of that, Father, we speak the name of Jesus over every reason that's on our heart this morning, over this season of our life, and over the path that you have called us to walk in. Father, we pray for our visiting pastor that will deliver a message from you to us today. We pray over his family, O oh God, and his faithfulness towards you as we pray that for ourselves as well. Oh, Father, set someone free today in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to break chains today in the name of Jesus. Deliver us from evil today in the name of Jesus. 
And when all is said and done, may we leave more accepting of your will than when we enter today. Forgive us, Lord, and bring our attention to the things that we struggle with that we need to surrender to you even now. Thank you for your love and your grace. And we pray this in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. be transformed by your love. May our souls be refreshed from us. At this moment, let people everywhere join us now as we come to you. This is praise and worship time. We're going to sing now, Lord, I lift your name on high. And let's really sing this as if we really mean it, all right? again. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. 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 Amen. Seeking the lost. Three, seven, three. Thank you. 
Church, say amen one more time. Amen. Praise the Lord. One of my favorite songs, Seeking the Lost. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody here grateful that God plucked you out of darkness and brought you into his marvelous light? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand clap in praise because truth be told, we've all been there. Amen. Amen. We've all been there. Sister Cami, we've all been there. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And that's why we are so grateful for church. Uh, am I alone in here? We're, we're, we're grateful for church. Because if it were not for church, many of us would not have fallen in love with Jesus. I have one testimony over this side. Fallen in love with Jesus. And I can say to you today, unashamedly, family and friends, that falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that I've ever done. If that's your testimony today, if you co-sign that, put your hands together. As we just give God a hand clap in praise. Amen. Amen. I'm just so excited for the moment where we are in our service today. We are at that period where we get ready, where we gear up for the moment of proclamation. Somebody ought to say amen. We have a preacher in the house, and I'm so excited because this is a mighty man of God that we are privileged to have with us today. Our speaker is none other than the one and the only Pastor Dr. Valtrix Benz. Will you say amen? He is the proud pastor of the Ambassador Seventh-day Adventist Church in Fort Lauderdale, where he's doing a mighty, mighty work for Jesus Christ. I had the privilege of meeting uh, Pastor Benz in New York when he served at the, with the Northeastern Conference. I was with the greater conference next door. Somebody ought to say amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> ah, but he served with distinction uh, with, at the Northeastern Conference Church to the point where they had to uh, send him an uh, invitation to come to pastor in the Florida Conference. And let me tell you something about this man of God. Wherever he goes, the church is transformed. 
Now, now, I'm not here to perjure myself from the pulpit so you can take everything I say from this pulpit to the bank. And I'm telling you, any church that Dr. Bins uh, pastors, uh, it, it, it is transformed. He injects new life and vita vitality to the system. And we just want to thank God for his service. Will you say amen? Praise the Lord. He is joyfully married to the lovely, the beautiful sister Denise Bins. And she's in the house, Sister Bins. Will you just give us a wave? Praise the Lord. And they have been happily married for 31 years. Will the church say amen? He is the father of Leah, Caleb, Isaiah, and Micah. Isaiah and Micah are in the house today. We just ask them to wave as well if they're not too shy. Praise the Lord. We are so glad you are here. And as you can see, family, there are a lot of family members who came out to support for the wonderful baby dedication sermon we just ha had. And we just want to say welcome to the family. Welcome to North Orlando. And we say praise the Lord. Just before we hear this mighty man of God uh, deliver God's word today, I just want to say that Sister Mary Brown is a gift to the body of Christ. Now, you all didn't hear me. Sister Mary Brown is a gift to the body of Christ. Mighty minister of music, and we thank God for her service here. At this time, she's going to be giving us the song of meditation. May God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. So selfishly reach out to me for what pleased me. Even God was still faithful to me. Every time I came back to Him, He is waiting. Once again. 
Come on, say amen again, somebody. It's good to be in God's house. How many of you know that had it not been for grace and mercy, we wouldn't be here today? Y'all, can we put our hands together for God and all that has transpired so far? He's a mighty good God, and we have come to give him praise and adoration. Good morning, good morning. Actually, it's good afternoon right now. It's good to be back here at the North Orlando Seventh-day Adventist Church. You're looking really good from where I'm standing. And, And that's probably because you have, well, let me put it this way. It's because God has been faithful to us. It's been a journey. God has brought you guys on the other side. But it's more than just the goodness of God. I'd say that you've got a transformative pastor in your midst. Put your hands together for your pastor. You know, I'm, I'm, as his senior, Doc, you know, not, much, you know, not much, but I'm watching him. I'm listening to him, and he's going to turn this place upside down. But, but you need to support him. You got to give him the strength and the courage he needs to make this place all that it needs to be. And so I want to thank God for the man of God in your midst today. He is happy to be here. Mm -mm. He is happy to be here. And when a pastor is happy to be in his church... It shows every single week. You, you ever seen those guys that are just, they just tired of being in the same spot. They just, they like energy. They don't like, they have no vision. They, you know, it's just dry, weak. But your pastor is happy to be here. And, and let me encourage you guys, get off to a good start with him because good starts means good finishes. And I am delighted that he has accepted the call to come out of the cold into the warmth of the sunshine state. Come on, say amen. It is good for the family of God to dwell together. I, you know, I don't remember if I've ever preached before this many family members before. Um, yeah, you know, normally it's just my wife and children, but um, I've got mother-in-law I've got brothers and brother-in-law I've got I've got nieces and nephews I've got all kinds of people here today and 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 it's just a wonderful thing to you know when your kids get a certain age they kind of walk out on your sermons <laughs> you know they they just kind of leave and 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 hang out with their friends and and you know they hang out in the back you know how it is it's got nothing to do with the pastor now. Be careful. Be careful. It's just the stage of life we're in. But it's good to have them seated and engaged this morning. I'm grateful to God that he has gifted this family with his wonderful blessings. Now, I, I know we shared a word this morning from the book of Zechariah, and I know what's listed in your bulletins, but I'm going to change things up just a little bit. Is that all right? Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. So I'm, I'm going to invite you to the book of Daniel. Daniel is where I want to spend our time together this morning. Daniel chapter 1 is where we're going to start, and we will... Engage the word of God this morning as we share together. I want to thank your pastor for his kind words of introduction. Uh, Now, uh, now, uh, I know Pastor Carroll. I I just can't remember where he's from. Now, 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 his, (laughs) his, his accent doesn't give me much clues as to where he's from. Mm. Really? Okay, okay, okay. So I kind of had it all planned out how I was going to do this thing, but uh, he's from a different island. (laughs) 
And it just kind of messed up my whole, my whole thing here. Because you know, any, any Guyanese in the house? So I was in Guyana this past um, October, my wife and I. And um, we ran into this particular food that just lit up my senses. <laughs> it, it's called egg ball. <laughs> say it loud, say it loud. <laughs> and and, and we, 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 we had one, you know, we, we kept seeing this food truck with this huge line. I mean, just a long line. I'm wondering, what, what in the world are they selling? Because everybody over there is just waiting. So we decided to go over there and, and, and just take a, a, a look at what they're selling. And so we decided to give it a shot. I said, I don't know what it is. Give it to me and just put everything you're supposed to put on it on it. And it was fresh because they kept selling out. It, just, it was fresh just coming out of the, the whatever. It was just cooked. And man, we ate that thing and that thing lit us. I mean, it was apps. Anybody know egg ball? Egg ball, egg ball. We don't have nothing like that in Jamaica. Mm -mm. It was absolutely delicious. So, you know, having gone to school with some carols from Guyana, I, I just assumed that that was there. But it, it, any, it, so we have a couple Guyanese in the house. Any Trinidadians here? There's some Trini, Trini, Trini. So I, I, I lay over in Trinidad on my way from Guyana, and I ate a currant roll that messed me up for at least a week. <laughs> so I, I won't be stopping in Trinidad anymore. <laughs> Just passing through, Doc. That was the problem. Bless the Lord. And, and there's this other island that... Um, I'm not even going to call because, because everybody here is from there. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just going to leave that one alone. But, but uh, uh, that, that's where I'm from, uh, a, little, a little parish called Clarendon. <laughs> a any Clarendonians in the house? Wolande, Wolande, Wolande. <laughs> praise God, praise God. It's good to be here on this side of town. Um, if you guys are ever down south, stop on by, Ambassador. It is a wonderful place to worship. God continues to do what he does there in spite of who we are. And he continues to pour out his spirit both here and there. And the family of God continues to prosper in that part of the vineyard. Daniel chapter 1. Let me read for you, and it's a very familiar chapter. If there are two books that Adventism is familiar with, it is Daniel and Revelation. So Daniel chapter 1, and I'm going to ask you that you remain seated just because the length of our chapter as I read it in your hearing. The word of God says in Daniel chapter 1, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave, the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. The king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the prince's children, in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning the tongue of the Chaldeans. The king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank so nourished them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Han Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom 
the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Mel Belteshazzar, and to Hananias of Sadrach, and of Mishael, Meshach, and Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who, appoint, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse likened than the children which are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, as thou seest deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and prove them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Then Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the ten days, at the end of the days, that the king said he the king had said he would he should bring them in then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar the king communed with them and among them all was found none like Daniel Hananiah Mishael and Azariah therefore stood they before the king and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them Ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all the realm. I've given message, I've given title to our message this morning, The Magnificent Refusal. The Magnificent Refusal. Bow your heads with me. God, we stand today between... The pillars like Samson asking one more time to lean against the pillars. God, if you would restore power and strength that the years have sapped, grant your continued grace and mercy now. God will be careful to honor you with our praise and our thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Our chapter opens in exile, and I'm going to invite you just to stay with me for about half hour or so. I want to engage your mind and your heart. Babylon is the arena in which faithfulness is to be tried and tested. While we await the drama, the scene before us bears little resemblance to war and servitude we so often associate with exile. And that's because we gather in the king's palace. All that unfolds before us happens in a place of privilege and opulence. Uh, one needs a strong dose of spirit and discernment to look beyond the privileges of the palace to know that to know to get to this place of exile a lot of prayers went seemingly unanswered when Babylon first surrounded the beloved city Jerusalem no doubt the saints began to cry out to God but the book before us with its setting in Babylon reminds us that not every prayer of deliverance will be answered not every prayer for healing will be answered. God has purposes that are bigger and wider than our specific prayer. And all must work together for the larger purposes of God. But know that in the midst of it all, 
it will also work for our good. Come on, say amen, somebody. God will use our obedience or our disobedience. He will bestow favor or remove favor to accomplish his purpose. Trials and problems come because we are not ready yet. Come on, say amen. Uh, whatever we give to God, God will use for his glory and for our good. Uh, the captivity orchestrated by God Certainly not his original plan, but through disobedience or obedience, God will take what you give him. And while it is painful to be dragged from your home, God will use it to, a wit to witness to a king who believed he was in charge of the world. Uh, chapter 1 lets him know that those who worship God are ten times better than others. Chapter 2 informs him that God is sovereign. He sets up kings and he takes down kings. He controls the affairs of this world and he's not found in magicians and soothsayers. God is setting him up because by the time we get to chapter 3, uh, uh, there are three boys that defy his order and do not bow to his music, but he still didn't get it until the Lord took his mind and gave it back to him. God will use whatever you give him, your disobedience or your obedience, to bring about his purposes. Come on, shout somebody. You, you see, the chapter falls into three nice scenes. The first scene begins with an invitation from the king. Daniel chapter 1, 3 through 5 declares, And the king spoke unto Aspenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and as such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Stay with the preacher this morning. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end of the three years they might stand before the king. Can I, can I tell somebody, Nebuchadnezzar will not have any slackers or sluggards in his service. He picks the best and the brightest, those without blemish and well favor, who will learn the ways and the language of the Chaldeans. These saints of God are the sought after ones by the universities and the employers of Fortune 500 companies. They were to be cared for and trained for three years before rendering service to the king they are given the best the empire has to offer in fact the same rich food and wine that is placed before the king is given to the trainees now, now one has to be led by spirit and prayed up to see just how seductive this setup was come on somebody uh, uh, what, what captive son uh, uh, or what son of an immigrant wouldn't want the opportunity to be trained and educated to occupy some of the highest civil servant positions the kingdom has to offer? You, you know, most of us are, are from another place, and, and we come to this country with the, with the opportunity to, to rise and, and to achieve and to study and, and to gain uh, 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 all that God has in store for us. And wherever you have come from and whatever you've come with, this training program invites you to leave it all behind because the successful ones are the most adaptable ones. Mm. Come, 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 come. Stay with me. The successful ones are the most adaptable ones. You see, the, 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 the seduction, Pastor, is not blatant. It's, it's not coercive. It's, it's not flagrant. In fact, conformity is cradled in the bosom of opportunity. Mm. Conformity is cradled. In the bosom of opportunity. The seduction is so benign, but the possibilities were so great that we probably would not have noticed the high cost of conformity. Ah, but Daniel noticed. Mm -hmm. 
And scene two opens this way. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Daniel recognized the high cost of conformity for whoever feeds you owns you. And Daniel belonged to another. Uh, but this is not just about food or freedom, but about faithfulness to the God he belonged to. Uh -huh. Daniel had this magnificent ability to discern and perceive differently. And this was not a skill developed, but a gift prayed for. The ability to act contrary to the crowd and jeopardize the opportunity of a lifetime does not come from natural perceptions, but is gained through prayer. You, you can't make those decisions to do different without the Spirit of God filling your mind. It, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy to understand all that was laid before them. It's an especially difficult task due to the fact that we so often pray for doors to open and we see promotions as blessings. I mean, it was not that big of a deal, just a little bit of food and a glass of wine. And how often we pray and ask God to open this door and open that door without considering the cost of conformity. But Daniel, the word of God says, Daniel will not let himself be defiled. And that word defiled is the first hint in the story that something is wrong with the king's program. Mm. Something is wrong with the king's program because Daniel will not allow himself to be defined. Everything else is right so far. The food is good and, 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 and the wine is proper and the education is great and the lodging is right, but that word defiled messes up the equation. Reminds us that that, that something is wrong with the king's program. You see, Daniel understand that the king's diet, while it would make him acceptable to the king, would make him unacceptable to the king of kings. Lord have mercy, somebody. Daniel refused the king's food because it was inconsistent with, the, with, with his lifestyle. With his way of life. And, and I'm wondering today, you know, we, we don't look the way we used to look. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. We don't eat the way we used to eat, Gary. We, we, mm -mm, mm -mm. we in, in fact, we don't dress the way we used to dress. Uh, uh, mm -mm. We, 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 we've done, we've done, gotten proper, and 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 money has been made, and 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 things have changed. But Daniel says, listen, listen, it's inconsistent with the way I live my life. Daniel understood that there are just some things you just can't bless and make it clean. Hmm? No, 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 you know, that's a sermon all by itself right there, you know, because, because we, we, we like to just pray over stuff and, and, and pronounce some kind of blessing on it and think it's all right. Now, 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 you know, now, now, watch this now. The, the, the text is, is silent on what's on the king's table. But I got to imagine Mr. Arnold was present. Mm -mm. M -m Mr. Trenton. Hel hello, somebody. Y'all forgive me. I am Jamaican. Uh, uh, um. And, 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 and maybe some, some stew peas with, with, with pig teal. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was all on the table. In fact, no respectable king during that time will not have a whole pig on the table. And we know from Leviticus and Deuteronomy that swine was on God's don't eat list. And if he's a God that changes not, how did it suddenly become clean just because it jumped testaments? 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we just can't pray over something and, and call it clean if God says it's unclean. There's nothing wrong with the pig. God just says don't eat it. But whatever was on the king's table, it included wine, da including the wine, I should say, Daniel refused to eat and to drink. Daniel reminds us that it's not always best to go along with the king's program. Had Daniel said yes, he would have lost his identity. Dining at the king's table for him may have, uh, 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 may have meant exclusion from the welcome table. A yes here and Daniel would have disappeared into conformity. He would just have been another, another man bought with a, a price or succumbed to a weakness he could not control. Daniel would have been just another enrolled in the king's university. But in his no lies his full identity. He declares by saying, no, I am a servant of the most high God who requires that I conduct myself in a certain manner. And verse 8 of chapter 1 reminds us that even in deportation and exile, chin deep in the apparent failure of prayer and the refusal of God to answer, Daniel is still devoted to that same God. Say amen, somebody. You see, devotion didn't stop because a siege took place, because a storm showed up, or because cancer showed up. Devotion didn't stop because a home was destroyed or rent can't be paid. Daniel knows more than the story reveals. He knows that while Nebuchadnezzar is Lord of Babylon, he's still not Lord of the universe. Nebuchadnezzar doesn't know that, but Daniel and the boys do. That while he may have won this battle, he cannot win the war. That while the Jews and some of the holy vessels were in captivity, it's only because God gave them into his hand. When God has allowed the storms to wreck your life, Worship still the God who sent the storm. When God allows the disease to take your health, praise God still who allowed the disease. When God has allowed a pink slip to come your way, praise God still that allowed the pink slip. But Daniel is not the only one to whom refusal to conform matters. Verse 9 informs us that God gave favor and tender love to Daniel. You see, God's favor informs us that the actions of Daniel are the actions of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, God doesn't grant favor just to do it. God grants favor when you are lined up with what he wants you to do. And so the the favor of God reminds us that the actions of Daniel are the actions of God. That resistance wasn't birthed from disobedience or from a connect uh, 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 or, 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 or from, from, from your, your unwillingness to conform. But, but it was birthed from a connection with God through prayer. And God comes alongside his child to aid in that resistance. Didn't hear from God much in the first scene. But just when Daniel purposed in his heart to remain faithful, God shows up. You see, God's movement in this story reminds us of the old adage. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Daniel's magnificent refusal emphatically asserts that the ways of the child of God is different from the ways of the world. That diet matters. That dress matters. That lifestyle choices matter. And the favor of God is intimately connected to those choices. Can, can, I, can, I, can I say that again? There are some things that matter to God. And when they matter to the people of God... God shows up. 
And God is reminding us in this story that diet still matters, that dress still matters, that lifestyle choices matter. And I know it's getting really unfashionable to talk about lifestyle choices because everybody wants to do what they want to do. They want to love who they want to love. They want to live with who they want to live with. They want to do what they want to do. But God is saying to us this morning that all of that stuff matters. And God attaches his favor to what he believes is right. So God now shows up in the narrative. Not in any miraculous or spectacular way, but decisively and conclusively, he grants favor. Mm. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, he didn't part the Red Sea here. Didn't call water from a rock. Didn't take money from a fish's mouth. He simply grants favor. That, that's all God did. He shows up, but he grants favor. Now watch this, watch this. D did, did you catch the fact that purpose preceded favor? Mm. Mm. Did, did, you, did you catch that? Purpose precedes favor. God did God you see God needed to see where your heart is before he lets favor go God needs to see that 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 your mind is made up that that your heart is fixed and, and there's no turning back for you before he lets his favor go you see favor is different from grace can I talk about favor let me talk about favor for just a minute everybody enjoys grace but favor is a special gift released upon your life that causes others to see you differently. H Hello, somebody. Uh, you, you may have... I, I, I miss you may have missed the, the stealthy movements of God if not for Daniel and his friends favor would have gone unrecognized and it begs the question well how do you identify divine favor well 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 in in the story it's when the chief of the eunuchs took a liking to Daniel. Mm -hmm. the, he, he doesn't know why he likes Daniel. After all, they're, they're prisoners. They're, they're captives. They're not his kind. They're Jews. They look different. They eat different. They dress different. Well, why is it? In other words, all the boundaries, all the differences were in place for me to take a good hard look at you and say, mm-mm. Can't get with the one that tall. His accent is different. His look is different. His dress is different. Come on, you're, you're, you're acting like you don't know what I'm talking about here. You, you know, when a, a, a different kind of person walks into the church, Bishop, you know, they, they, they don't have the same accent we have. They don't talk the same way we talk. They come from a different culture, a different mindset. And we all kind of look at them like, mm, if they're coming out of a different religious persuasion and they say amen too loud, you, you know how we get, we, we all turn around and we look at them like it's strange to praise God up in here. Like, 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 like it's strange to praise God for the good things that he's done. He doesn't know why he likes Daniel. He just does. He's not aware of divine favor. Doesn't know how it works. But God is working on him and through him. And so how do you identify divine favor? Well, well when, 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 when the qualifications for the job uh, qualifies your qualifications, but you still get the job. Mm. Hello, somebody. That, that's divine favor when, when you get that promotion that you know should have gone to somebody else that's divine favor when 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 doors open that you weren't even knocking on that's divine favor when the doctor tells you six months but here you are six years later that's divine favor when somebody says to you i don't know why i'm doing this but there's something about you that compels me to do it that's divine favor divine favor purpose comes before favor and purpose cannot be maintained and sustained without purposeful prayer mm -hmm. let me bring it back let me bring it back Purp 
purpose comes before favor. And purpose cannot be maintained and sustained without purposeful prayer. Purposeful prayer is that kind of prayer that, that not, not the routine stuff that fills most of our prayer, but it's that determined effort. It's not prayer when you have time, but, 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 but when you make time for purposeful prayer. You, 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 we'll find out later on uh, that this is how Daniel conducted his life. Three times daily, Daniel would leave wherever he was doing, uh, wh whatever he was doing, and he would call on the name of his God. You see, you see, prayer didn't just fit into his lifestyle. His lifestyle fit around his prayer life. Whatever he was doing, the word declares That he would leave. And three times a day. He would go into his house. You remember it's that same behavior that got him in trouble. In chapter 6. Same behavior. Purposeful prayer. Is what. Undergirds. Purpose. And when you've got purpose in your life. You begin. To see things. Clearer. You begin to, purpose begins to prioritize your life. And when your life gets prioritized, it releases your potential. Can I say that again? When your life gets prioritized, when you, when you engage in purposeful living, it prioritizes your life. And when your life is prioritized, it releases your potential. Potential. Because the king found them ten times better. It released their pole ten shall when you undergird your life with prayer and purpose. You see, you see, we will never be able, and I'm wrapping up now. That, that, that wonderful musician that played that piano so well this morning. Go, go ahead and play something for me, Doc. Play something for me. We will never, saints of God, be able to face the lion's den or refuse the delicacies of the king's table without purposeful prayer. To be like Daniel, watch me now, it's not to be gifted with intelligence or good looks but it's to develop a prayer life that releases divine favor on your life and the life of all who you come in, in, in contact with. And so when you've got Daniel's and the boy's prayer life, nothing bothers you because if God allows it, it will bless you even in the midst of exile. And so as we prepare for this baptism today, I'm just wondering, just wondering, who else might be willing to take that step? Because God wants to do so much for us. But sometimes it just takes a, 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 just a little refusal. J just to say no to one thing and, 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 and ask for courage and strength for the other. Sometimes it takes just a, a simple no. For God to see in you what he wants to develop, what he wants you to become, what he wants, what he wants to bring to the surface. I'm wondering if there's somebody else here today who wants to stand up for Jesus the way Daniel did. Wants to stand up for their, for their God, no matter what the, the, the issue is. Thank you so much. Somebody who wants to stand up for their God and declare no matter what is placed before me, no matter what assails me, no matter what challenges come my way, I'm going to stand up for the God. And, and let, me, let me talk to the overflow here because they're the only ones standing over here. You, you, know, you, you, you guys have decided to follow Jesus no matter what comes before you. And I'm wondering if there's anybody over on this side who has decided to do the same thing. That no matter who comes in your life or what comes in your life, you have decided to engage in the magnificent refusal.
to say no to all the things that would detract you from your greatness, that would rob you of your potential, and would stifle God's good gifts in your life. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. And while I got some more stuff, I want to respect the time and honor the good work that these men and women have done in calling souls out of sin into this marvelous light. God, we honor you this morning. You've been such a good God to us. You have been faithful. God, our lives teeter between obedience and disobedience. Sometimes, God, we are good like Daniel. And other times, we are messy like Jacob. God, we live between these two extremes. We endeavor this morning to live on your side. God, that's our desire this morning. We want to be like Jesus. So take our hands and our feet, take our eyes, take our heart, and conform them to your will, God. This morning, Father, we're praying that the love of Jesus will constrain us that it will, it, will, it will bind us. We will see the beauty of Calvary, God, and we will want to turn from those things that easily beset us. We would see the, the power of Calvary, God, and, and we'll exchange our lukewarmness for fire, Father. God, we will want to exchange our, 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 our lukewarm ways, God, that, that, that robs you of, 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 of your might and your power inside of our lives. God, we want to be on fire for you again. We want the fresh anointing of your spirit all over again. So, God, I'm praying this morning that you'll do just that for us. Not because we are any, we're worthy than any other, God, but, but because you're merciful. So grant to us, God, what we have been unable to achieve on our own. Grant to us, Father. A heart that is made up, a mind that is made up. A heart that is convinced that he that shall come will come and will not tarry and wants to be ready when he comes. God, we pray for this North Orlando congregation. It's people, it's families, it's persons, it's pastor. God, this union of shepherd and sheep we pray, God, that he will constantly lead them to the springs of living waters, to green pastures. And then, Father, when the wolves come and he's unable to do it, yea, though we walk, we will fear no evil. Because your rod and your staff comforts us. Give them what they need this morning, God. May this union Set ablaze this North Orlando community. God, from this spot, may all who are under the sound of my voice hear you declare, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a little. I'll make you ruler over much. Grant your continued grace now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
those of you who know me don't like to handle these instruments or equipment. So, but today would be extraordinary, would be kind of special. At this time, I'll ask the baptismal candidates to come forward. They are Kadeem Dixon, Kadeem Dixon, Samoy Levers, Keisha Barnett, Shelby Dickerson, Leah Richards. I think there were five, but now I see four. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Miss Shelby, looking good. forward and face me right there. Thank you. After all these five cabinets uh, will take the baptismal vow and make their commitment. And then I have three questions for you. And then you will say, I do, the affirmative. And then the congregation will say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Number one, although they're facing me, brothers and sisters, if you see the smiles in these candidates' face, a glowing. And after the question, I'll have to turn to see the, and it's just amazing, amazing, amazing. Question number one, do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? I do. I do. And the congregation? Yes. Number two. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamentals belief of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with the teachings? and the congregation. Yes. Number three, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, your tithes and offerings, and a life of service, church. and the church? Today, my brothers and sisters, help rejoice and be pleased with these five candidates who have taken their vows and made their commitment. And now you may behold their smiles on your faces. Please turn around. And say, Church members, you have heard their response to the question, and now is their motion that these candidates be accepted into fellowship after baptism. I didn't hear I so move. Is there a second? It's carried. At this time, my brother and sister, Dr. Thompson, where are you? Um, please come and pray on behalf of these candidates. Shall we bow our heads? Loving Lord, we are so honored, O oh God, to present these five candidates into baptism. Lord, all, all heaven rejoice as they stand, Lord, declaring that you, Lord, are the Lord of their lives. Father, we just thank you for the young ones and those who are rededicating their lives to you, O oh God. 
We pray that this moment, after they are baptized in the watery grave, they will come forth to blaze a fire, a light, wherever they are placed, like Daniel, like Meshach and Abednego. Father, hear and bless this ceremony, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. At this time, the can guests go to my right, your left, and the deaconesses will help you from there. Sister Maxine, you're here. Good afternoon, church. And what a wonderful day. We had a baby that was dedicated to the Lord. Amen. And then we have five souls who are giving their life in baptism to Jesus. Let the church say amen. first one into the pool this afternoon is Sister Kadeem Dixon. She told Pastor that she would be in the first baptism of the year, and she has kept that promise. And we are so happy. And we would like to know if there are any friends or family members of Sister Kadeem, if you will stand, if you wish, you may come down to the front to show your support for her and Sister Kadeem Dixon, as today she gives a public admonition of giving her heart to the Lord. Let's sing hymn number 294 as we come into the pool. All together now, would you be free? Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you the Lord. Will the church say amen? amen. I, I'm just so excited, family. I'm excited for this opportunity. This is a signal honor, and I just want to say praise be to God. Uh, you know, whenever a child of God decides to uh, give their life to Jesus, it, it's a joyful occasion. Amen. You know, it's a time for all of us to just wish them happy birthday, amen. happy amen. birthday. You know, and we just want to celebrate with every one of our candidates today. Will you say Amen. amen. I have the privilege today of standing with my dear sister, Kadeen Dixon. Will the church say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Kadeen, because you love the Lord and you've decided to make Jesus your choice. Upon this, the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. As a minister of the gospel, I deem it an absolute privilege to baptize you now in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. What you do, service for Jesus the King. Let's go. What would you do, service for Jesus the King? 
Will the church say amen? amen? You see, family, it's a time for celebration. Yes. And we don't mind interrupting our regularly scheduled program just to give God play, praise. Will you say amen? amen? The Bible says there is joy in heaven yes. over one. Yes. And we are so happy. Oh, family, we have in the pool today Sister Samoy Leavers. Will you say amen? amen? Her testimony today is, there is water, here is my heart. What hinders me from being baptized? So my dear sister Samoy, because you love the Lord 
and you want heaven to be your home. Yes. You have voted for Jesus today. Yes. And upon this, the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior from sin, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let all God's people say amen. amen. Sons and daughters, bring your sons and daughters. Bring your sons and daughters. Bring your sons and daughters to be baptized. Lord, now I see. Sister Keisha Barrett. All right. And I say, everyone who is Keisha's family and who loves her, I invite you to stand. I invite you to come forward. Is that risk? Let your support. And we know Keisha. We have loved her for many years. She is our family, and today she is rededicating her life to the Lord. Praise the Lord, family. Yeah. Sister Lakeisha has come a long way. She is in the pool today, and she's just so excited Amen. to be at this point in her spiritual walk one more time. She has a quick testimony she wants to share with you because it is so powerful, and uh, I believe it is uh, designed right now at this moment just to encourage somebody on their spiritual walk as well. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. So I'm trying to give the shorter version <laughs> because the journey is amazing. Just to say, this is my second baptism. And the last. Amen. When I listen to me, I say last. <laughs> okay? Now, it so happened to where it all started again. I've walked away from God. And I know he's never walked away from me. And I did that because I lost my mother. And who know my mother knew she was my rock. And I had connected to her. If my butt my tool, my call my mother. Every single thing I call mommy because mommy was my go-to for God. Because that woman was a powerful woman for God. So I know. So when I lost her, I just lost hope in everything. Mm. I had suicidal thoughts, I had everything. And a friend called me. And I tell you, God will reach you wherever you are. Yeah. A friend out of the blue called me and said, I felt led to pray for you. I don't know what it is, but it's something about your mother. When I tell you God hear you no matter what he does. And I'm in so many different things. Again, in a place where I believe God wouldn't be. But when I tell you, I got a call again from that same friend. And just start saying, why are you troubling my soul? Now I know I was doing wrong. And anybody that know me that are out there, including my children, knew I was not walking right with God. But I was still hiding. But you can't hide from God. Because wherever you think you are, that he won't come, I dare so him show up for you. And he showed up and showed out. Because he hooked me. When I tell you I am no longer plugged to my mother, but I'm plugged in the throne of grace. And God is my grace and my God. Me now move. I am moving for God, and no one else can stop me. So the devil is a liar, and I am standing firm on his promises, and I hope you guys keep praying for me as I do for you and for all the children of North Orlando, that they will see me stand again for God and will choose his way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise yeah, the Lord. Praise the Lakeisha, we want you to know that as a church, we are standing with you in yeah, solidarity. Yeah, yeah. Not only, only are we standing with you, but we pr promise to pray for you yeah. and all our candidates today. Will the church say amen? amen. amen. My dear sister Lakeisha, we are so moved by your testimony. 
it is clear that you have fallen in love with Jesus Amen. for yourself. Amen. And because you love the Lord and you've decided the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. Upon this, the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let all God's people say, Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We have some pathfinders in the water, everybody. Put your hands together as we celebrate the goodness of God. Amen. Where are the cameras, young people? Bring out the cameras. These pictures got to go on your Instagram page with the hashtag happy birthday. Come on and say amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today we have in the pool today Shelby and Leah. Will the church say amen? They are in love with Jesus Christ. They are excited about their new relationship with him. And I'm just so privileged to be here standing in the water with them. Shelby, Leah, because you love the Lord and you've decided that heaven will be your new zip code. Upon this, the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ. As your pastor and the minister of the gospel, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit, let God's people shout amen. 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 church say amen. amen what a powerful powerful experience we all had today in the presence of the lord what we just witnessed family is jesus literally 
uh, getting on his heavenly computer, bringing up their record of sins, and just hitting the delete button one by one. Oh, praise the Lord. That's what baptism is. Baptism is a brand new start with Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me, family? Amen. Their sins have been washed away. Their record has been erased. They're standing before God and man clean in the name of Jesus. I want to say one more thing, family, and I want you to understand it very well. Don't miss it. Baptism is uh, 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 it's not graduation. Baptism is matriculation. Right. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Does, does that make sense? It doesn't mean that they have arrived, family. It begins, it, it marks the beginning of a journey with Jesus Christ. Will they make mistakes? Yes, yeah. they will. But they're going to get up back in the name of Jesus because the Bible says a just man falls seven times but rises up again. Praise the Lord. So pray for them. Lift them up. Call their names. And we know that God is going to to do miraculous things in their lives we're going to be having the next baptism in the next coming weeks and we are praying that if god spoke to your heart today and you're not yet baptized or you need to be re-baptized i pray you will reach out to one of us uh the pastor or one of our elders or our bible workers uh sister maxine reach out to somebody in the name of jesus so that you too can have a fresh start with jesus christ because one thing i know and the preacher will will will, will footstop this with me today one thing that we know he that shall come he will come and we, he will not tarry i pray you'll be ready for jesus to come may god bless you in jesus name amen amen let's all stand now as we look upon jesus sinless is he covered with his blood whiter than snow him 412 Look upon Jesus, sinless is he, Father in his life unto me, my life of scarlet, my sin and
to dwell together today Amen. in unity, sweet harmony, and love. Let us pray. Father, we have tasted of your goodness through the word today. Yes. We have been filled with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. With every life that just went down in the water, demons trembled, O oh God. Yes. We ask that you will place a hedge of protection around these lives and fortify them for your kingdom. As we head into a new week, may we walk in our purpose and be intentional about building our lives around purposeful prayer Amen. so that we can realize your divine favor. Amen. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have had a wonderful day praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Please bear these announcements with quick reminders. Next week, February 4, is the first Sabbath of the entire month of Black History Month. The Chitons will be here, a young people's group who will be singing for divine service, as well as having a concert in the afternoon. Please make sure that you return. Also, on February 11, we will have our Pathfinder Day. Again, a reminder that you cannot miss any of the Sabbaths in the month of February. We also want to remind us that as we go out of the sanctuary today, we do have our law enforcement officers who will help to guide you safely as you are dismissed. Remember that as you get in your cars, please don't hesitate. Drive out quickly and listen and obey the instructions of our law enforcement officer who will be outside to direct traffic. It's all about safety. Have a wonderful day. May God bless you. Please be seated. Again, please be seated until you are ushered out by our ushers. May God richly bless you.